questions 1 through 10 of the 1997 grade 11 Fermat math contest is what I will cover in this video. So the first question states 1 to the power of 10 plus 1 negative 1 to the power of 8 plus negative 1 to the power of 7 plus 1 to the power of 5. So anytime you have 1 to the power of anything it's going to be 1. So these are just 1. But if you have negative 1 to the power of something if the exponent is even the answer will be positive 1. If the exponent is odd it will be negative 1. So this just becomes 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 which is of course 2. So the answer here is E. The value of x is. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this here y this angle in there. And then I've noticed that they've given you this value as 125. So if this angle is z, we know that all the angles about a line are 180. So that means z plus 125 is equal to 180. And solving for z, we get an answer of 55. So therefore, we can look at the sum of the angles of this triangle. And as always, the sum of the angles of a triangle are always 180. So this becomes 50 plus y plus 55 is 180. And we can solve for y. And y becomes 75. And then finally, all the angles about this line are 180. So therefore, 80 plus y plus x is 180. y plus x is 100. y is 75. So 75 plus x is 100. And therefore, x is equal to 25. So the answer here is C. The greatest number of Mondays that can occur in 45 consecutive days is. Well, let's draw a little calendar for ourselves and then let's start with the very first day being a Monday so right here and then of course we just keep counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and the eighth day will be a Monday also and similarly every seventh day will be a Monday 15 day 22 day 29 day 36 and day 43 and then day 44 is a Tuesday and day 45 is a Wednesday. So this is the greatest number of Mondays that we can create. So how many did I create here? Looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 Mondays is the greatest number that we can create. The product of a positive number, its square and its reciprocal is 100 over 81. What is the number? So let the number equal n. They're saying the product of that number and its square, which is that, and its reciprocal, which is that, 1 over n, is equal to 100 over 81. So solve for n. It looks like this and this will cancel. It will become n over n, which is just 1. So we're just left with n squared is equal to 100 over 81. So you take the square root of both sides, and this becomes 100 over 81, like that. And this is, of course, just equal to 10 over 9. And that would be choice D. The sum of 7 consecutive positive integers is 77. The largest of these integers is... So what we will do is write out 7 consecutive integers, which is x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 5, and x plus 6. And they're saying that when you add it all up, it will be 77, like that. So all we have to do is just solve this equation here. So first, 
how many x's do we have? I believe we have seven x's. And then we have to add up one, two, three, four, five, and six, which is 21. And that equals 77. So solving for this, we get 77 minus 21. 7x is equal to 56. And therefore, x is equal to 8. Now, they're not asking for x equal to 8, so don't make that mistake by choosing a. They're asking for the largest of these integers. And the largest was the last one, x plus 6. That's the largest integer in this group. So x plus 6 is equal to 8 plus 6, which is 14. So the answer here is C. If 2 times 10 to the power of 3 is represented as 2e3 on a certain calculator, how would the product of 2e3 and 3e2 be represented? So they're saying that 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 is represented as 2e3, like that. So this calculator is just showing the number, and then they're showing the exponent. And I'm assuming that's what e means, exponent 3. And exponent 3 to what? Base. Well, in this case, base 10. So if you have this one, 3e2, Following the same principle, it's most likely 3 times 10 to the exponent 2, like that. So what they're saying in this question is if you have 2e3 and you multiply it by 3e2, what are you going to get? That's what the product means, multiplication. Well, 2e3, we already know, is over here. 2 times 10 to the 3. And then we're multiplying it by 3e2, which is right here. 3 times 10 to the squared. So this looks like 2 times 3, which is 6. 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2. Remember, you add the exponents. So that would be 10 to the 5. So if we put it in our calculator format, it would be 6e5. So the answer here is B. The perimeter of the figure shown is, well, we don't have this side. If we did, we can figure this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a perpendicular from this side all the way down to the bottom, like that. And that will help us figure this out. And this is, of course, a right angle. Now, this is 4, because these are all right angles. And therefore, this side is going to be 7 minus 3, or 7 minus 4, rather. So it's going to be 3, like that. And you'll notice that this triangle is a right triangle. And I'll draw it here. And the sides they've given, or we figured out, rather, are 4 and 3, and this is a right angle. So that will allow us to figure out this side, and we can call that x. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, but just in case you didn't know that, if you use Pythagoras, you can figure out x. 9 plus 16 is x squared, and therefore x squared is 25. x is equal to 5. So now we have all the sides. We can figure out the perimeter, p. It will be 4 plus 4 plus this side, which we figured out is 5, and the last side, which is 7. So 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 is 20. So the answer here is E. 3 of the vertices of a parallelogram are 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 1. The area of the parallelogram is. So let's draw this out. And we are given 0, 1. So I'm going to make it a little bigger here. So I'm going to put
put this as 1 and this as 1. So 0, 1 is right here, this point. The next one is 1, 2. So that's up here, and right here. This is 1, 2. And the third point is 2, 1. So it would be here. Now they don't give us the fourth point, but by symmetry we can figure out that the fourth point is most likely here. So that, as a coordinate, is 1, 0, like that. And therefore, our parallelogram is basically like this. And now they want us to figure out the area. So if we can figure out the side length, we'll be able to figure out the area. Now, if you draw a triangle inside this parallelogram, you'll notice that that will help us to figure out the side. Now this is of course a right angle. Now what is this distance from here to here? Well, we can see from the diagram that it's just one, right? Because this is two and this is one. So that distance is one. And similarly, if I were to ask what is the distance from there to there, it's also 1, because this is 1, that's 2. So then, if the side is, let's say, x, we can use Pythagoras to figure out x. So 1 squared plus 1 squared is x squared. So that becomes 2 is x squared. So x is equal to root 2. And similarly, you'll find that this side is also root 2, just by the exact same principle. So therefore, the area of this parallelogram, which is essentially a square, is x squared, which is root 2 squared, which is equal to 2. So the answer to this question is b. If 10 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 20, and y is basically between 40 and 60, inclusive, the largest value of x squared over 2y is. So x squared over 2y is what we're trying to figure out, the largest value of. To do this, we have to figure out the largest value of the top, which is the numerator, and the smallest value of the bottom, which is the denominator. If we do that, we will get the largest possible value of this expression. So for the numerator, what is the largest possible value? Well, here are the range of x's, and the largest is 20. So we'll put 20 for x. And then for the denominator, what is the smallest possible? Well, here's the ranges of y, so we'll use 40 because that's the smallest possible. And then you solve for this, so this becomes 400 over 80, and 400 over 80 is 5. So the answer to this is A. Number 10, on a cube, two points are said to be diametrically opposite if the line containing the two points also contains the center of the cube. The diagram below, or rather on the side here, shows a pattern which could be folded into a cube. Which point would be diametrically opposite to P? So first I'm going to draw this out. So first we have our cube, and now I'm going to draw the lines that they've created, and that will help me label the letters. So those are the lines, and they're not perfectly drawn to scale, sorry about that, but we can now label the letters. So this right here is P, this here is Q. When you label this, please be careful. Remember, this part, the way it flips, it's going to change the way it looks. 
So this is now going to be R. This is now going to be S. This will be T. And this point here is going to be U. So you can get a Rubik's Cube or something and kind of look at this. Or you can make your own little uh, cube. But it's very important that you understand that. Now what are they asking? They're asking for a line that's diametrically opposite. So when you draw a line from point P that passes through the center of the cube, and let's say the center is, say, here, where do you end up? So it takes a little bit of practice, uh, looking at shapes and kind of figuring this out in your head, envisioning this. Well, let's draw a line from P. It has to pass through the line, remember? And it looks like it's going to land at S. So the key here is that we're not coming straight down from P. We're going through the center. And therefore, when you do that, as you can see, it lands here. So the answer to this question is point S, which is choice C.